moderators for this session are architect Chinar Balsaraf and Priyanka Shelke. Uh, architect Chinar Balsaraf is an architect and researcher. He graduated from a uh, University of Mumbai at the IES College of Architecture Mumbai in 2018 and studied Indian arts and aesthetics at Gnana Pravaha Mumbai. Currently, he's working as an architect at Studio SNK, Somaya and Kalapa Consultants, Mumbai, with architect Brinda Somaya, and a research associate at the HECAR Foundation. Chinar is interested in architectural research, cultural landscapes, Indian aesthetics, and urban design, and plans to work on these domains. Priyanka Shelke is a final year student, um, fin final year architecture student from Rachana Sansad's Academy of Architecture, Mumbai. With an inclination to, co to collocate art and science, she believes that architecture is more than mere walls and hopes to create meaningful spaces, both through words and bricks. She believes that simple, habitual observations often spark exceptional ideas. With sustainability being the matchless shot forward, she hopes to make a worthwhile contribution to the same. I welcome our uh, moderators for this session and I um, hand over the, uh, the session to them. Thank you. Um, I thank uh, Design United for providing a platform to students to share their work as a great amount of time and resources are spent by students to come up with appropriate design solutions. Also, it is a learning for us to, as a designer uh, to, uh, to see the academic projects uh, and the strong research approach along with material innovation and conceptual basis, thus creating uh, uh, small measures and great impact in the design community. So my first question is to all of the panelists, like what inspired or motivated you to look into a, this specific topic uh, of your project? What was the start point or initial uh, a thought process which uh, when that you need to see this project uh, this topic um, we can start with disha so i think for me um, i'm very interested in documentation on site um, i went on site and looked into things and then came into this project the government is doing and and maybe if I go to documentation of it, then the design would change parallel. And documentation was the triggering point for me. Neha? Uh, for me, it was actually uh, two parallel sets of uh, things that were happening. Back in 2018, I actually visited Sri Lanka for the first of the time. And uh, in fact, I actually met uh, Varna ma'am there at uh, Palanda sir's office. And um, it sort of struck me that we only tended to visit all the places on the southern edge of the island uh, versus the northern parts of it is something that we didn't cover. And sort of just looking into the situation over there, it was uh, extremely politically driven. And coming back to our studio where uh, the other parallel um, sort of discussions that we were having with our uh, related to our thesis topics was how architecture necessarily doesn't impact um, political sort of um, issues. And somehow I found myself being uh, not in agreement with that, which is why I was sort of inclined towards this project. And that's sort of where I uh, sort of bridged the two together. Kaya? Um, hello. So I think the most motivating factor for us to uh, choose a topic that is so sensitive, uh, but also um, uh, very less talked about in our society, uh, drug abuse in Pakistan's youth. As an elder sister uh, to a younger younger brother, as uh, our group members, more, uh, we have five group members, we all worked on, on this project together. We all have younger siblings or cousins or uh, or any uh, any of these people who are in these schools exposed to uh, this atmosphere and we, f we really feel like they don't uh, respond to uh, a, a very preaching approach where we uh, tell them that don't do this it's bad we felt like we really needed to be uh, we really needed a, a tool that was speaking to them and not for them and uh, since this uh, uh, this uh, this topic was so close to our heart 
and we uh, some of us did experience this not uh, not long ago we really felt like it was it was the it was the perfect uh, topic for us to go forward with well, that was really great to know that uh, it was a very personal uh, touch to your campaign and it started from there and also there is a common thread between all three of this projects that uh, it addresses issues which are not generally talked upon and especially in the two thesis topic which we saw that it is not like some hotel or resort project it really addresses the community issues which is currently the need of our need of our so i hand over to priyanka for the next question uh primarily i would like to congratulate you all for being the top 3 and i would also like to say that all of all all three projects were so inspiring to look at and just study uh the question that i would like to address to all of you all is that what were your learnings apart from your design solution so apart from the design solution that you came up with what else did you uh, what else stuck with you neha uh i'll okay i'll go first um i think the takeaway uh, in terms of like the learnings uh was that not i mean we are always taught about how tactile uh, measures are important for architecture and i think the non tactile element of it is something that is very much um, something that focuses mainly on the way in which a person uh, actually relates to that project uh, which is probably the biggest takeaway that i would take from uh, my own project to any other project that i'll be doing as well okay um disha i think with respect to my project i would say that uh, once you start really communicating with people and community um, you start seeing architecture and uh, and them differently and whenever i used to visit government offices to take you know uh, permissions or letters or anything uh, i think after talking to them being with them for such a long time i was so defensive and they used to say these jain kurubas don't do anything and i was still like no no they have this no no they have this they can do that you have to see it in this way i think uh, that really changed i think that energy and uh, the joy that gives when you talk about some other community and being with them and how over time this uh, when i initially went to talk to them they were very uh, defensive and they were like no no we stay there this is our settlement you can't come here and gradually they let in they were like you can come inside you can have food with us that was really nice i think your passion really reflects in the way you talk about the community as well uh uh taram do you want to take this question yes uh, so i think other than design learning and uh, um studio learning uh, even though we didn't have a studio we were we ended up uh, just looking at each other through screens uh, i but through that we also kind of understood the value and the impact of uh, online learning and online communication which is why primarily from going to schools we ended up publishing our entire campaign making, making it entirely digital and uh, putting it online we uh, uh, other than design we really felt like Uh, since this issue is uh, is in the in the crux of it it's really it's not even in the infancy of it it's really settled into the roots of our society and since it's uh, it's impacting the most impressionable age group we really want to approach them through their mediums rather than pushing our uh, understanding on uh, on them uh, since i've said uh, earlier uh, how we don't never want it to take a preaching approach and i think other than design the communication aspect of it was a most important and the most learning part of our project right really fascinating to see how you all uh, sort of flip the uh, flip the lens where instagram is generally used to showcase this really uh, quote unquote glamorous lifestyle while you were trying to uh, do something quite opposite i thought that was really interesting chinar yeah also uh, it also talks about all the projects of designer being an activist rather than just being the so called designer so that uh, change is very important uh, i feel uh, so talking about learnings what were the challenges you guys faced while dealing with this project so anybody disha yeah i think uh, like the biggest challenge 
of course getting permission to go inside nagahari tiger is a forest so i had to wait for like one month to just get sign on the paper so that i can enter and stay there and uh, you know document them uh, because they say that there is so many political issues and ngo issues that you can't just go and barge in and talk with them that was one and second thing was actually understanding the world view of the community it took me almost three fourth of my uh, semester to really decode it as to what is it every day i used to sit in front of those myths and those drawings and research papers i think what is it that i'm not seeing what is it that that is so much in them that they don't really show it as a uh, fancy thing but it's so strong in them that they are jain kurubas and really reflect in their lifestyle so really understanding that and decoding was very difficult neha i think uh, the first thing was to even pick up a topic that was actually not considered to be uh, more of an architectural topic i think that to deal with how um, uh, a lot of people view architecture as just buildings and uh, we're taught that it's much more than that but we are never really allowed to sort of experiment with uh, what's really to come so that is one and the other thing was that uh, every single time that i actually came up with a response i had to be um, i had to be careful about being sensitive towards it because it does not have to come off as i mean it's very easy for it to come off as like a very knee jerk sort of like a solution to uh, these real uh, problems that people who are um, uh, who are actually in other countries who are uh, living there as refugees actually are facing so i think that sort of maintaining that balance was uh, the hardest portion of it param valeri what were your challenges um i feel um okay valeri you go oh, okay um i was just uh, going to say that um along with the the entire covid lockdown quarantine situation that we had uh pre quarantine as well just to get in touch with schools and uh kind of explain to them what we are doing and get permission we thought it would be uh, much more easier than it actually was so we were kind of realizing how how difficult it is to actually um run a campaign in schools where you know the higher ups might not agree they might say you know what do you mean uh, our our kids are fine they're not doing drugs they're like why why should we uh, introduce them to such a thing so i think that was something that we faced very early on and then as we moved to social media we kind of overcame that and i think that was yeah yes, that's I, the power yeah. of social media yeah definitely yeah. I, uh, i i remember the first school that we approached was actually we uh, two of our uh, group members including myself we were alumni of that school and we thought we have a in on the school so no one's going to say no to us but we uh, we actually we present, we had an entire presentation and proposal set out for them and uh, as uh, as nice they were while uh, pre- uh, like while uh, having us presented they really didn't uh they i we didn't feel like they had any intention of <laughs> letting us uh, in or run it in their uh, in their institute because as well we said um uh, i feel like these institutes are uh, the more big uh, scaled they are the more corporate they are the more uh, it uh, likely it is for them to be naive and turn a blind eye towards uh, this aspect of their students uh, life so, uh, since uh, a lot of uh, Uh, permissions and a lot of things come in the way i feel like they try to uh, try to back date it a lot uh, other than uh, the permission issues uh, 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 being a hindrance i feel like uh, while uh, when we went online and when we were actually designing uh, uh, like when we were operating uh, trying to operate the game on instagram uh, a post to post game has never been i don't think it has ever been done on instagram we actually got inspired uh, from a uh, twitter where a link game is uh, being operated uh, where you uh, just click a link and it takes you to another tweet and it's just a it's just a snowball uh, effect and with instagram it was a little difficult uh, to uh, to learn the learn the spe- specifics of it so uh, because we had to rethink a lot of things uh, we had to generate a special hashtags that have never been made before so when you click that hashtag only our post can be visible so i feel like the technicalities of uh, running this campaign on instagram 
was uh, was a little was a little uh, a bit of an issue, but we gladly overcame that. Interesting, Priyanka. Priyanka. Sorry, um, I lost you there for a bit. Uh, yeah. Um, then so with 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 all my time that I have spent with Design United, we have always tried to. uh you know explore different um, facets of design which is why this question uh, has really been a favorite of mine and i would like to ask everyone uh, whether they see themselves exploring other manifestations of this design question tara um Uh, I feel like um, since we were kind of forced into using uh, an online approach for this uh, for this campaign, and we were primarily thinking of a very physical and a very face to face campaign, uh, as much of an audience that we reached through Instagram, I feel like a face to face campaign would uh, also be very useful if we were to ever overcome the red tape that it surrounds itself with. but i feel like uh, with uh, with uh, so we had grand plans of uh, bringing in a psychologist into our team and collaborating with them and making it as uh, solid as possible so children can uh, you know uh, uh, can be more receptive towards our approach and by uh, carrying out workshops and making it as creatively uh, inclined as possible we thought we can um, do uh, we can be we can we can make it a successful campaign so i feel like design wise when you shift towards uh, uh, from from uh, from the real world to the online world uh, things change but i feel like they do have a, a advantages to both ends of it um neha so um so i think the different manifestations as such would be to see something that is uh, non architectural also because um, i feel like as uh, my at the end of the day because it was a thesis it was much more of like a large scale sort of a project uh, but i would really love to see if suppose um, maybe uh, with the vaccine getting introduced i can actually go interact with somebody uh, who does go through this on like a daily day to day basis and um, i'm not sure as to i'm not like immediately ready with an answer as to what uh, that sort of implementation would be like but design or non design i think i would like to actually uh, explore that a little further as well very nice desha would you like to go next um with respect to my project um, if if covid was not a problem then cause on site documentation would have continued and uh, that was one and other thing is uh, like neha said you know you could really speak to people and collaborate with them to like almost i was in you know collaborating with anthropologists and uh, people who were documenting indigenous languages and dfos of uh, government so that you know once you give that uh, thesis to them they could actually refer back and see yes we can you know make these changes while we are giving um, the files to world bank for funding and it's not really the house that matters to them but it is the place and uh, the kind of environment that is required then what is actually government looking into i think if covid was not there it would have moved a little forward i was seeing my project there Um, well, that's very inspirational, uh, Disha. Yeah. That you are taking it forward and trying to execute it for the yeah. community you are so interested in. Priyanka, would you like to conclude? Yeah. Um. So, uh, first of all, I would like to commend all the speakers for their inspiring words. With Neha exploring memory and architecture through a new lens, Tim Team Dam Mare Dam for addressing. the social issue of drug abuse in such a playful manner while still keeping the ethos of it intact and for disha uh, addressing this indigenous community and opening all these dialogues with it and about it i think i think that was really commendable uh, as a last sign off i would like to ask all of you all if you have any advice for the students who are Uh, so being a student myself uh, who is about to give her thesis uh, i would also like to know if you had any advice for students of various design communities 
Um, uh, so uh, we're, uh, we're, Valerie and I are actually giving our thesis right now. We are in the last few days. We have like 14 days left, Valerie. <laughs> so, <laughs> so I feel like, uh, and yet we, uh, so uh, 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 our date was, ex um, uh, so we had crossed the deadline for this submission uh, for this conference. And we, I emailed them personally if there can, uh, there, if an exception can be made. And you guys were kind enough to let us in uh, 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 late as well. So I feel like, uh, as students of uh, the creative field, of the design field, as much as you can do in your studio, which is very uh, commendable and everything, but the more you kick yourself out of that space, the more you try to approach and take uh, the direction into the real world, uh, be, it, uh, be it online or be it uh, in person, you should definitely go forward uh, and break the walls of your studio to see where your uh, your project can be taken forward. Because I feel like the as students were so frustrated and so tired of the, because of the continuous work that we we kind of lose ourselves into that uh, into that cloud of uh, cl cloud of uh, frustration and tiredness because we feel like this is it. Hami grade mil gaya sab khatam. We are done. <laughs> but the more we can, the more we can take it forward uh, into the realms of the real world. I feel like uh, the more worthy our work will become. Matlab, uh, I feel like our teachers uh, have said it before that the more you throw out in the universe, if two or three of uh, the stuff that comes back to you, it's 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 a uh, it's a job well done. I think, um, according to me, um, something that my advisor says is really important. She says, Ek cheez bolo, solid bolo. And I think that is really important, especially as designers. Keep it simple, keep it short. And yeah, that's all I have to say. Very in line with the advice you just gave. <laughs> um, Neha, would you like to go next? Sure. Um, I think. Um, uh, as like if you're in a very specific field, let's say if a person who is outside architecture is also doing their thesis right now, uh, I think it's very important to break those barriers which sort of uh, bound our professions. Like I, I feel like a lot of the questions that we uh, see on like a day-to-day -day basis are not necessarily something that uh, people would consider architecture or even design rather. Uh, so I just, I mean, advice would be like a big word, but I just encourage people to sort of uh, go and like really try out something different and like actually really question uh the norms of like the things that are like around you that's actually great advice disha i think one has to be open to taking risks and just keep moving forward whether it's giving any results or not keep moving forward then i think one has to always look things in a very positive way um, and not negative when you, whether you get negative remarks or uh, negative responses. And third thing is, um, I think one has to be really brave. Uh, uh, in uh, one thing is uh, trying to understand what you really like, and also be brave in saying what you don't really like, and take that path so that you know you like it and you enjoy the journey. Thank you. Thank you so much to all our speakers. Over to you, Priya. Uh, thank you, panelists, for such an involved discussion, which has thoroughly brought out the valuable ideas and thoughts of all our speakers. Thank you so much. Um, I would like to conclude this session by asking architect Amrit, our head juror, to share a few words. Hi, everyone. Um, thank you, Priya, and thank you to uh, Chinar and Priyanka for your thoughtful questions. Um, and the entire jury team as well. And like Valerie said, I'll try and keep this simple and short. Um, it's really nice, I'm just reflecting on it. It's actually really nice to see the projects uh, presented in sequence because as a jury, what we were, um, what was in the back of our minds was to make a selection that was diverse, um, which would be kind of in tune with the conference. But after seeing all the work, I'm, I'm seeing and adhering more uh, things in common than uh, differences. And I also um, want to appreciate, you know, the, the challenge of capturing the depth of your work in two images. It's not an easy task. And 
um, something we were really looking forward to is, is unpacking those images because something that was obvious is that there was a lot more to, to the story. Um, so, and, and I think in the question period, we uncovered that um, something common to all three of these projects was a personal connection to the work, which um, I think leads to a project that is um, very strongly multi-layered, um, a multi-layered narrative. And, and something that uh, we'll continue to see in the works of the presenters uh, today is that design is something that is enriched by its participants and by these layers of culture, of practice, of history, of trauma, of healing, ecology, resilience. That's just to name a few, you can go on and on. But um, we felt that these three entries really uh, best reflected the consideration of these layers and um, allow it allows an idea to, to synthesize into a solution um, which can hopefully improve the lives, um, lives in a sensitive way. Um, and we saw that there was sort of equal space and consideration given to the thinking process as much as the design or the spaces themselves. Um, none of your projects were kind of singular moves. Um, none of them were kind of inward looking projects. And we really commend you for that. And uh, um, I think the, the third project in, in particular, Dam Are Dam, it's, um, it really struck us because it's more than an object um, or a design, it's an action. Not only is it an action, it's an action that's already, it, it's not a proposed action, it's one that's taken place already. Um, and we're excited about the sort of next uh, potential steps for you guys. So I just have a few closing notes for each of you and then I'll shut up. But um, uh, Disha, something that's so apparent in your work is uh, that it's compassionate, which I think architecture needs to be. Um, and you know, even making space for your expressed intention to go and there's a pandemic that's preventing you. Um, and I know you already know this, but I encourage you to uh, continue to do this. And it is important if you are working um, with cultures or communities that are outside of your own cultural context. Um, and I think, Something to be mindful of when you're working with uh, remote cultures um, is that these, these groups are very used to seeing people, NGOs, teachers, nurses, etc., come in for a very short period of time, do their thing, and then leave and not see them again. And it's actually something that um, from the outside, it might look like incremental healing. But from the inside, it can also look like, you know, a sort of slowly taking pieces of it outside of the place. So, I think in future, as you continue to do the work that you do, um, it might not just be a month that you wait, it can be longer, but um, try to continue to be persistent and um, as sensitive as you are, if you choose to follow this path and uh, don't get distracted by the, the easier route and the, the learning curve is long and challenging, but ultimately um, very rewarding. Um, so Neha, I think something that stood out to us is that you uh, tackled all scales of your project in a way that was so um, crisp. And uh, your, your design idea um, was apparent to us through all of those different um, scales and modes of representation. And I don't think we talk enough as a design community about um, embodied trauma that is in every place that an architect, an architect approaches or an architect touches. Um, so I would say just continue to be mindful that um, it's not just in calls for monument design or museums that are opportunities to, uh, to heal a place. Um, and every site that you will ever approach has an embodied memory, has a forgotten story, has uh, something latent in the site that can be resurrected and, and brought into the light and healed for someone. And I think um, that's, it's those actions that can create optimism, can create hope. Uh, for people and your responsibility moving forward would be to uh, have the same attitude for all of the work that you do, whether it's, you know, a, at the scale of a sill detail to the scale of, of the city. Um, to Valerie and uh, Taram and your entire team, again, I think the collaborative nature of your project is what really struck a chord with us. And also in the question period, you gave space talking about how teachers, educators, students, like those are the people who are claiming ownership of your project, not not yourselves. And, and the intention is to create something that other people can take away and uh, the potential for change is, is um, infinite in that sense. Um, and uh, I don't have much to say other than uh, you've done this exercise. Um, if you were to do it again, you would know how you would do it differently. 
and you would do it better. And this is just the first step. It's a fantastic step, but it is the first step. And uh, and I think when you're working with students or youth that are, I don't like this term, but like at risk, um, uh, to, to, I guess, really understand what your role would be as a, a supporter. And, and you did mention this, that it involves talking to, um, uh, talking to people who are deeply entrenched in those uh, communities and also um, funding is a huge one. Support, dedication, like you said, like navigating the red tape and, and bringing different experts um, into the fold. So we are excited to see um, what comes out of your cohort in the future and how this expands. So thank you to everyone. Um, it's a pleasure to have your work as part of the DU conference and, and all the best and see you later today. Thank you, Amrit. Thank you so much, Amrit. I thank everyone who's present with us in the conference. Hello.